Okay, so our last section we're going to look at is 8.5 in your book. Um, if you're looking in the packet, it's 5.6. Okay, and the only thing we're really going to look at um, today is basically taking what we did in 2D, uh, cross pro uh, dot product, um, length of a vector, scaling a vector, everything we did in 2D, and do it in 3D. Okay, if you can do it in three, um, 2D, 3D is not really any harder. And this is basically what a, a 3D coordinate system looks like. Uh, it's a little hard to sketch things, so we're going to stay away from sketching in 3D. Yeah, we did a lot of sketching in 2D, uh, not in 3D. And the way you can figure out the direction of the axes, um, this is called a right-handed coordinate system. And what that means is if you take and your index finger points in the direction of the x-axis, uh, your middle finger points in the direction of the positive y-axis, your thumb will point in the direction of the z-axis. Right? So if x is going kind of towards the floor and y is towards the door, then z would be going up, just like in that picture. Okay? Versus if you did that with your left hand, okay, if you line up your, your middle finger, your index finger, notice your thumb points in the opposite direction if you use your left hand. Okay? So that's... That's how we can tell the difference. The only difference is Z. So keep in mind, it's a right-handed coordinate system. All right, so first thing we'll look at is um, how to find distance in 3D. Okay, this is the formula from 2D. It's basically the Pythagorean theorem. You guys have probably done that before from like algebra, maybe geometry or algebra one. It's a Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. So now in, in 3D, the difference is we don't have ordered pairs anymore. Okay, a pair is when you have an X and a Y. Does anybody know what we call these? Pairs would be if we had two. But now we have three. Triples. You are triples. Yep. You could still call it a coordinate or an ordered triple. Okay, and Anybody have a guess what I'm going to add on to the end of the formula to make it 3D? All right, so um, can you say that again, Ubi? No, you just want to add kind of Z in the end. Yep, I'm going to add some Zs on the end, but can you tell me exactly what I'm going to add? Z1 and Z2. Okay, and what are you going to do with Z2 and Z1? Uh, Z2 minus Z1. Yep. And then, square. and then square it. Exactly. This is basically how every formula is going to work today. Okay, we're going to look at it in 2D, and then there's just a small thing we add on to the end to make it 3D. Okay, so your distance in 3D is the change in the x's squared, plus the change in the y's squared, then plus the changes in the z's squared. So take a second and see if you can find the distance between um, P1 and P2. Generally, I, I usually let P1 be the X1, Y1, Z1, and then P2 can be the X2, Y2, Z2. Okay, so just fill in those numbers into the formula, and then we'll see what you get. And then after we do this with coordinates, then we'll start to get into um, 3D vectors. All right, guys, let's take a look at um, finding that, that distance. Keep, keep in mind, if it's, a, um, if it's a square root, you can reduce. Always make sure you can reduce it you know, as much as possible. All right, so who can tell me the um, first two things we subtracted? Four negative one. Yep, that looks good. Four and minus a negative one plus, okay, next two things. Yep, negative 2 minus 3. And last two things. 5 minus 2. Right, so now we'll do it out. What's 4 minus negative 1? 5. 5, and then we square it, we get 25. Here we've got negative 5, but when we square it, 
We also get 25. Nine. 5 minus 2 is 3. Squared is 9. So what's the distance? Square root of 59. Okay, in this case, in this case, you don't have to worry about reducing that square root. Okay, any question on finding distance in 3D? Yeah, pretty easy. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so vectors in 3D. Okay, in 2D, this is our unit vector notation. Okay, you had that in your notes from Tuesday. AI, A times I, plus B times J. Now, in 3D, we need one more component. We had a unit vector that was I, we had J. What do you think we're going to have now? <coughs> K. Again, the, the I, J, and K are all bold. I is a unit vector that points in the x-axis direction. J is your unit vector that points in the y-axis direction. K is your unit vector that points in the z-axis direction. If you're going to write it in the other form, you still use the angle brackets. And now, instead of just being a comma b, now it would be a comma b comma c. A, B, and C are what we call the components. The X component, the Y component, and the Z component. Is A, the X -axis or the y -axis? Uh, A is the X-axis. Okay. B is the Y, and C is on the Z-axis. Do we have to label I, J, K, or can we do X, Y, Z? Would that make more sense? For the unit vectors? Yeah. Well, these are, these are the names that, um, that are given to them in textbooks. So I is a unit vector on the x-axis. J was the one on the y-axis. Yeah. That's just the letters they use. At least they're not Greek letters. Right? Okay. This statement you already have in your notes from Tuesday. Oh. Bless you. Just reminding you it still works in 3D. If you have a vector that starts at the origin, it's called a position vector. Okay. Anytime the initial point is at the origin, that's a position vector. Okay. Any question on that? So in 2D, that's how you found a position vector. Okay. x2 minus x1, comma, y2 minus y1, where the coordinates of the initial point are x1, y1, terminal point, x2, y2. Okay. Now we'll extend it to 3D. To find a position vector in 3D, what do you think I'm going to add onto the end of the formula in 2D? Yeah, we're just going to add a z2 minus z1. All right, so now our initial point has a z component. Our terminal point has a z component. And the formula for the position vector is the same as 2d, x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. But now we have z2 minus z1. So the nice thing about the formulas in 3D, if you just block the part with the Z's, then you can use it in 2D. Okay. So let's find a position vector in 3D. Right. So my initial point, even though it doesn't say initial, always assume P1 is initial, P2 is terminal. So when I find my position vector, can anybody tell me the x-axis component? What's x2 minus x1? 
5. Yep. So that's your x-axis component. How about my y-axis component? 4. 6 minus 2. And my z-axis? 2 minus 3, negative 1. Okay. What, if, um, what if I wanted it with the i, j, k? <coughs> what would the first one become? If we wrote that with i, j, k notation. All right, so we were talking about how to write this with i, j, and k. Yeah. So that'd be like 5i five five plus 4j. Yep. Plus negative 1 or minus 1? Minus 1. It'll be minus 1, minus k. Minus 1, k. Or you could put minus k. Okay. Either notation is correct. You could see either one um, on the final. Okay, question on position vector in 3D. Okay, next thing. All right, so we had formulas for adding, scaling, and finding the length. Well, in 2D, okay, if we wanted to add two vectors up, we added the x's, we added the y components, and that was it. Well, now in 3D, we're going to have to add the x components, add the y components, and then what else? Add the z components. Yep. So if you want to add two vectors in 3D, just remember now you've got to add the z components as well. If you're subtracting, you subtract the x components, subtract the y's, and subtract the z's. How about um, scaling? Does anybody remember what property it was kind of similar to? When we have a number in front of a vector? Multiplication, Multiplication like distributing it out. Yeah. Well, before you had to distribute that number to the x, then to the y. How about now? Also to the z. Okay, and to find the length of a vector, or its magnitude, that was the formula in 2D. The square root of x1 squared plus y1 squared. And what do you think we're going to put on the end of that? Plus z1. z1 squared. Yeah. Okay, so the first part of that formula, it's really your Pythagorean theorem. That's the Pythagorean theorem in 3D. Any questions on that? Okay, so we'll try um, maybe one of, we'll try like three examples. We'll try adding, scaling, and finding the length. Since they wrote it with i, j's, and k's, we'll write our answer with i, j's, and k's. If I add those vectors up, what would be my i component? 5i. Okay. How about the j component? Negative 1j. And the k component? 3k. And that's the only way we're going to add vectors in 3D. We're not going to do it visually. You can, just like in 2D. But I'd say you probably want to use a computer or something to draw in 3D. Makes it easier. Okay, length of V. Um, anytime I find the magnitude, what's the first uh, thing I should always write down? What's, what's in the formula when you find the magnitude? Square root. Square root. Start with that. Okay, what's the first number that I'm going to square? X1. Which is? 2. Two. The second number I'm going to square? 3. Yep, just the 3. And the last number? Negative. Negative 2. So what is the length of 
B. Square root of 17. Yep. Right. And last thing we'll do is scale vector w. I want to find 3w. Hey, so if I scale w, uh, page, what would my i component be if I triple it? Nine. Yep, nine i. Okay, uh, Derek, my j component. What is it? Negative 12j. And my k component? Um, how about Oopy? Uh, 15k. 15k. There's, there's the vector 3w. Questions on scaling a vector in 3D? Hey, okay, next thing. Dot product. Well, if you could do dot product in 2D, doing dot product in 3D is exactly what you would expect it to be. Yes? So we, for the magnitude, 2 squared plus 3 squared plus negative 2 squared. You just square each component and add them up. So you square each component and then add them all up and take the square root. Okay, so in 2D, okay, if these were 2D vectors, that would be our dot product. Multiply the x's plus multiply the y's. And in 2D, that's where you stop. But now I'm going to add one more thing onto the end. Z1 times Z2. So you multiply your x's plus multiply your y's plus multiply your z's. So let's find the dot product between those two vectors. Okay, Ty, um, what's the um, first two things I would multiply together to find my dot product? Uh, 2y and 5y. With the i? Or just two and five? Yeah, just the, just the two and the five. Good. Okay, because dot product, it's just, uh, just a number. Um, Brian, how about my next two? Uh, negative three and three. Good, negative three and three. If this was 2D, we'd be done right there. Okay, now 3D, we got one more step. Um, Will, what about my last two? We're finding our, our dot product. Six and one. Six, uh, be careful because it's a negative one. Okay. Right, just add that up and that's your dot product. 10 minus nine minus six. 10 minus nine is gonna give me one. one. Negative five. Minus six. Negative five. Now, once we have the dot products, what um, what does that help us to find? Usually, we don't just find a dot product just just to find a dot product. It helps us to do something. <coughs> yeah. Not it, the dot product doesn't help you to find the magnitude, but we are going to find the magnitude as part of what I'm thinking of going to we're going to do next. Uh, no? no, velocity. Yep. Angle. Yep. And the formula to find the angle between two vectors in 3D, it's exactly the same as what you would do in 2D. Okay. It's actually no difference. So cosine of your angle equals the dot product over the product of the magnitudes. 
The only difference is the dot product is a 3D dot product. Okay, you guys just did one. And the lengths are 3D lengths. Okay, you, we just did one. Okay, so we'll try one um, finding the angle. Okay, and I'm going to use the same two vectors we had up above. All right, so to find, uh, okay, to find the angle between these two vectors, I'm going to use the same two vectors we had up above. What was the um, dot product of those two vectors? What did it come out to? Negative five. Okay, so I'm not going to go through it all again, but that, that was our dot product. Okay, and length of u. Okay, what are the three numbers I'm going to add up under the square root to find the length of u? 4, 9, 36. And what's 4 plus 9 plus 36? 49. 49. So we actually got a nice number. What's the square root of 49? 7. 7. Okay, that's the length of u. And length of v. What are the three numbers I'm going to add up? 25, 9, and 1. And that gives me the square root of? Um, is it the? Yeah, square root of 35. If it was 36, it would have come out nice. Right, and now we'll find our angle. What, what um, trig function do we use? Cosine. Cosine. Okay. What number goes on top? Seven. Yep. Dot product goes on top, and the other two numbers go in the bottom. And what are we going to have to do to get theta by itself? Inverse cosine. Okay, so we'll take inverse cosine, and now type all that in. Okay, and I don't think we get a um, nice answer. Second, inverse cosine, negative 5. If you type it all in at once, make sure you use parentheses, just like, um, just like I have here. That should be fine. 96.9 degrees. Are they parallel? No. Are they perpendicular? They are? Could be close. Close isn't perpendicular, though. Are, are these perpendicular? No, they'd have to be 90. This is 96.9, so they're a little more than 90. Right, it's close. Okay, so these vectors are neither parallel or perpendicular. Okay. Any question on that? All right, last thing. Cross product. Okay. Have we seen that before? No. no. Okay. The reason we haven't seen cross product before is because it doesn't exist in 2D. Okay. There's no such thing as a cross product in 2D. Can't do it. Okay. But I told you when you talk about multiplying vectors, you don't want to tell somebody v times w. Times is vague. You can say v dot w or you can say v cross w. That's the way we're going to learn right now. It's a pretty, pretty easy calculation. Right, so it, again, it only applies to vectors in 3D. Okay, the symbol for it is the small x. So in Algebra 1, you learn, well, it doesn't matter if you put a dot, if you put an x, it means the same thing. Well, in vectors, it doesn't. Okay, you can't. You can't use one symbol when you mean the other because they're different, different symbols. So on the left, v dot w. On the right, v cross w. All right. And the way I'm going to show you how to calculate a cross product, um, 
is called Saris's rule. I'm not going to explain too much about why this rule works. Okay, I'm just going to show you the rule, and we're just going to use it. Okay. And it's not the only way to do a cross product, but it's probably the easiest way I can do it without having to explain uh, lots of other things. Okay, so let's say those are our two vectors, okay? and they're in unit vector form. When we do an actual problem, all the A, B's, and C's are going to be numbers. It'll all be numbers. Could be positive numbers, negative numbers, we don't know. Okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to arrange everything we have there in what's called a matrix. Has anybody ever worked with a matrix before? Yeah. Just this way you arrange stuff, it's like a square, yeah. and you put numbers in, in each spot. <coughs> Bless you. And our matrix is going to have three by three. That means it's going to have three rows and three columns. Okay, in the first row, I want you to just put an I, a J, and a K. In the second row, I want you to put down the three numbers that are in vector V. A1, B1, C1. And then in the third row, put down the coefficients of the last vector, a2, b2, c2. Okay. Any questions on that step? Okay. Last thing we need to do to get it set up so we can visually um, see what's about to happen is I want you to copy over the first two columns you just made, again, right on the right. So take column one. Make a copy of it to the right of column K. Then I want you to take column two and put that on the right as well. So now ignore what's circled in red and blue. So now your first row is going to become I, J, K, and then put a copy of the first two things, I and J. Okay, the next row is A1, B1, C1, and then you're going to copy the first two things to the end, A1 and B1 again. And then what do you think your last row is going to be? <coughs> well, John, what do you think the last row will be? It's going to be uh, uh, A2, B2, C2, mm Right. And as far as the, the setup for the cross product, that's it. So this is the thing we're going to look at to find the cross product. Okay. Now all we have to do from here is multiply some things together. Why we're going to... Hmm? You know, all that crossing stuff, why is A1 and B1 not? Like, so I'm going to explain why these are circled in red and blue now. Oh, okay, okay. All, right. all right, so now, last step is you have to multiply six things. Okay? And I've circled for you the six things you need to multiply. Okay, you're going to multiply, we'll call this red <coughs> diagonal number one. You're going to multiply red one. You're going to multiply together everything in red two, and then everything in red three. Now remember, these bottom two rows are all going to be numbers. So you're going to have numbers to work with. So multiply what's in red 1, red 2, and red 3, and add those up. Right. Multiply red 1 plus everything in red 2 plus the product of red 3. And now the blue diagonals, those are going the other way. You're going to multiply everything in blue 1 together, multiply everything in blue 2 together, multiply everything in blue 3 together, and you're going to subtract each one of those. Okay, and when you see it with numbers, it's a lot. It's a lot easier. Okay, so multiply the three things circled in red, and we're going to add them all up. We're going to multiply the three things circled in blue, and we're going to subtract them all. Okay, so that 
is your formula for finding a cross product. Right, so we'll just try an example of finding a cross product and, uh, and that'll be it. Does everyone have the formula? If you don't have red and blue and you're trying to do it, you could use like a pen and pencil or, or label them one, two, three, four, five, six, if you don't have different colors. All right, so I'll, I'm going to leave that up while we do our um, example. Okay, so I want to find the cross product between V and W. So I'm going to create a matrix. Um, what's going to go in the very top row of my matrix? What three letters? I, J, K. Yep, I, J, K. And for now, what are the three numbers that are going to be in that second row? Two, three, five. Two, three, five. And the three numbers in the last row? One, two, three. One, two, three. Now copy over columns one and two to the right of that. So we're going to put I2, one. J3, two. <coughs> All right, now we'll just multiply it and see what happens. All right, so we have, I'll just circle it. I'm going to multiply that, then that, then that. What's i times 3 times 3? 9i. Yep, 9i. What's j times 5 times 1? 5j. 5j. What's k2, 2? Two, two? 4k. 4K. Okay, that's the first half of the cross product. Now you're going to subtract the other diagonals. This one, this one, that one. Uh, K3, 1. 3K. Yep, minus the 3K. I times 5 times 2, <coughs> minus 10I. J times 2 times 3, minus 6J. Now just combine your like terms, and that's our answer. Um, let's see. What's 9i take away 10i? Negative i. What's 5j take away 6j? Negative j. And what's 4k take away 3k? K. That's the cross product. Is that answer a number or a vector? It's a vector. So that's something that's very different. When you do a dot product, the answer is a number. When you do a cross product, you get a vector. Okay? And this vector has a special relationship to the two that it came from. It's perpendicular to both. Okay? I'm not going to prove that. I'm just going to tell you that. If I drew this vector I just circled in V, they would be at a 90 degree angle. If I drew that vector I circled in W, they would also be at a 90 degree angle. Right, so you could kind of think of it like maybe this is V and W. It looks something like that. Here's the one we just found. It's perpendicular to both. It makes a 90 degree angle with both. All right, and let's, uh, let's finish up by finding W cross V. Okay, let's try it the other way. What am I checking to see here? Anytime I switch the order when you multiply, what's that called? It begins with a C. Uh, Commutative. Very good. I'm checking to see, do I get the same answer when I switch the order? Okay. Let's see what happens. All right. I can basically use the same matrix I had. Just how do I change it to do W cross V instead of V cross W? Just swap the second and third row. That's all. And then do it again. So 
I, J, K, I, J. Let's make this a little bigger. Uh, now put one, two, three, one, two. Okay, that becomes the second row. And two, three, five, two, three is the last row. See what we got. Okay, what's um, i times two times five? Ten i. Ten i. What's j times three times two? J. Okay. K times one times three? Three k. Three k. What's um, four k? And remember, we're subtracting all these. That's a, let me double check, I think that's my three, yeah. Three times three Negative times nine i. Nine. Negative nine i. And lastly, five, one, j. Negative five, j. Okay, squeeze it in right here. What's 10 i take away nine i? One i. One i. How about six j? Take away 5j. 1j. And what about 3k minus 4k? Negative k. So my question is v cross w and w cross v the same? They're opposites. Okay. So these two vectors have the same magnitude but opposite directions. So now, if I asked you to find w cross v and v cross w, you could really just find one of them. And then to get the other one, just make, make everything negative. Or just switch the sign. Okay, any question on finding a cross product? Again, I'm not going to go through the reason why here, but if you did, you would see that when you find the cross product between two vectors, it's perpendicular to both the original vectors. That's, that's what a cross product does. It gives you a perpendicular vector. All right. Um, so homework is in your packet. Okay. On 363. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave off the, um, the cross product problem. Okay, you don't have one in your packet. I was going to make one up, but uh, we'll, we'll skip that. Okay, so there's not that many to really do. 15, 17, 29 to 35 odd. So 29, 31, 33, 35. And 41, 43, and 51. Okay, so you got... Um, just under 20 minutes. If you want to try to get it done and not have any homework, you can. And if you get it done, just show me. And there's no homework over the uh, shopping.